The Sports Podcast with the youngest, most daring, intrepid, gutsy, fearless host on the planet. Get ready for Jake's Takes. Here's Jake. My guest today is the head coach of the Detroit Pistons. He's been coaching in the NBA for the past 19 years. He's coached in two NBA Finals and two NBA All-Star Games. He was coach of the Toronto Raptors for seven seasons and had incredible success. They set a new team record for most wins in a season, won an Atlantic Division Championship, and made their first playoff appearance in six years. He became the first coach in Raptors history selected as head coach of the NBA All-Star Game. And in 2018, he won Coach of the Year with the Raptors. It's my absolute honor to welcome to Jake's Takes, Pistons head coach, Dwayne Casey. What's up, coach? How you doing? Doing great, Jake. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome. You got, and man, a, lot in, so- you got a lot of enthusiasm there. That's great. I love it. I love it. Thank you. You know, I'm very, I'm so honored to have you on my show. And I wanted to thank you for being so nice to me, giving having a nice little talk with me after the game in Milwaukee. So thank you. No problem. That was hard to do because we just got spanked by, I think, the top team in the, the NBA right now. So, but you were nice and sweet and your dad was was right there with you. And you said you were from Toronto. So that, that lit me up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. You didn't get spanked. You all, you all played well. We did, we did. We played played well that night, but the next night we didn't play so well. But but it still came up as a hell. But we're a young team, up and coming team. Uh, but uh, I still think Milwaukee is probably the best team in the league right now. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about the up and coming Pistons in a minute. Okay. But I just wanted to say again that we miss you big time in Toronto, and I always love listening to your post game media talks. And you did so much for that franchise. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Great city, great sports city, great fans like yourself that uh, really, really kind of solidified things. I remember when I first went there with Brian Colangelo and we had to go out and and, uh, try to get people to renew tickets and sell them hope and trying to get them back on board. And and then I remember when they did the uh, Jurassic Park, we never thought it would uh, fill up the way it did, and it did. We made the playoffs that first year against Brooklyn uh, after Masai joined, joined, joined in. So it was a lot of fun building that, getting to the top. We started, as Drake said, we started at the bottom, and then we got to the top. So it was a good run, great run, great fans, great franchise, uh, and uh, they still have it rolling there very well. Okay, let's talk about your Pistons now. Okay. Coach, there seems to be a certain time when a young team just seems to flip the switch, start winning games. It happened with Luka and the Mavericks, even John Morant and the Grizzlies. So I want to know, when do you think that time's going to come around for your Pistons team? Because you guys got an amazing young team with the backcourt who's ridiculous in cadence and Jaden Ivey. Isaiah Stewart's a machine. The Bogdanovich edition's amazing. Sadiq Bey won a championship in Villanova and is a solid shot maker. Like, what do you think about this team? When do you think they're going to turn the corner? Well, the thing is, uh, Jake, I don't know if there's a magic wand to say exactly when. You know, it almost sometimes just clicks just like that, just like it did in Toronto. We didn't, you didn't know when it was going to happen, but you could see it and feel it coming. And that's sort of what we are now. Right now, we're in the toughest part of our schedule. We're playing some of the top teams in our league, but... With that said, we can see improvement each and every day. We had a great practice today. Uh, We're getting some of our older guys back healthy, Marvin Bagley and Alec Burke, to come in. Because, again, you said it, uh, it's very difficult to to play and win games with young backcourt. We have a first and second year guys are starting backcourt, and they're going to be great. They're going to be exciting to watch. But at the same time, you go against veteran backcourts like uh, Drew Holiday and some of those guys each and every night. Uh, you you learn a lot about what you need to do and what what you need to do to improve. So uh, it's about growth. It's about improvement each and every day, each game. And sometimes that doesn't equal into wins for a young rum, young group of guys. But at some point, like like you just asked the question, that day is going to come when that light switch comes on. 
that uh, excitement, that togetherness is going to click and it's going to turn into wins. You know, Coach, you could tell you're such a young team when you call Marvin Bagley one of your older guys. Well, he is. He's 23 and he's been in the league. He came in the league early, but he's only 23 years old and uh, he wasn't playing a lot. He was a top pick above Luca in Sacramento. So now, you know, he has an opportunity to come in and play. He, we were 500 after the All-Star break last year, and he was a big reason for it because of his lob threats at the rim and the ability for him to block shots. So that was exciting for us to be able to get Marvin. And uh, even though he's a, a young, old young guy is the best way to put it, Jake. Oh yeah, he's gonna he's gonna break out this year. <laughs> yes, we look forward to that. Okay, let's talk Cade Cunningham. I got to watch him live last year in his rookie season, and then again last week in Milwaukee. And boy, what impresses me the most about him, he just gets to his spots. He's averaging twenty one six and six, but his mid range game is ridiculous. It reminds me of Demar Derozan. How good is Cade Cunningham? Well, again, we run a lot of the same things we ran for DeMar there in, in Toronto. And he's he's excelling at his mid-range. And I would say, Jake, the mid-range shot is probably the least efficient shot in the NBA game unless you're shooting it at a high percentage. And he and DeMar both shoot it at a very high percentage. One, because they're big. Uh, Kane's about 6'8 as a two-guard, 2'1". Two, so uh, that allows him to get up over the defense and clear the defense at that size in the mid-range where a lot of guys are not able to do that with their size. But he and DeMar both are the same but Cade kind of gets to where he wants to go. He's not overly fast, but again, like DeMar, he's like he's like DeMar in the fact that he's shifty. He has great footwork to get where he wants to go. He has a great command of the basketball. And again, he's 6'8", so he can see over a lot of defenses. And again, he still can go one more dribble and get to the rim if he needs to. By the way, I just watched the Raptors game and they just beat DeMar, so. Yeah, I saw that and uh, they had to double team him and get the ball because DeMar is having a great year. I think he had like, what, 43 in his last game. So the Raptors did a 46. great job. 46, I'm sorry. I didn't want to treat, treat him out of three points, but uh, they did a good job of getting the ball out of DeMar's hands, double teaming him and making him a playmaker, which was very smart on their part, especially when they were missing Zach Levine. So that's going to be a big, a big task for for the Raptors tomorrow night is how they're going to double team Demar with Zach Levine back, but uh, they did a great great job defensively of of slowing down Demar. Okay, so most people look at Isaiah Stewart and they think, oh, he was a young project, came into the league at 19 years old, he was just a rookie. But let's just call this straight, Coach. His numbers are incredible. You don't see centers this young immediately shoot. 70% from the line and drain over 30% from three. He gets more blocks and assists than turnovers, plays unreal defense, averages over a block a game. I mean, he might be the most underrated big man in the league. Well, he, he, Isaiah is. And again, he's a young kid that really plays with a high motor. Uh, you know, he, he puts the ball on the floor well. But one thing he does, he defends. He can switch on to anybody in the league, move his feet, and guard his yard, as I call it, all over the floor. So uh, that's what's exciting about, about Isaiah Stewart and his future. Again, he's a third-year player that's uh, really making his mark for our team in the center position. He's kind of the, the spirit of our team, Jake, as far as how hard he plays, the spirit he plays with. He plays with a pure heart and a pure mind, and he's all about the team. So he's something that really, really is important to us and uh, kind of, he's, he's the heart and soul of our identity. Got the energy, baby. Yes, he does. Okay, so I also want to ask you about your rookie coach, Jaden yes. Ivey. And I was so high on Jaden. And when I was watching the draft and saw him fall to five, I was like, man, this backcourt's going to be scary with him and Cade. Mm -hmm. But hear me out on this, coach. Don't think I'm crazy just yet. Tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. Have you ever toyed with the idea of having – Jaden come off the bench because him and Cade kind of have like a couple like what's it called similarities in their roles and maybe it would maximize Jaden's ability what do you think well it's a good idea but again for a growing team and a building rebuilding team Jake I think it's important to get as much as many reps as uh Jaden possibly can uh we have we do stagger them in their rotations once they do come off the bench 
and uh, where they're not playing with each other. And we're going to play probably Jaden a little bit more with the second unit where he can have his usage and ball handling with the second unit. So that's a great idea. Uh, we've thought about that. And and again, but I think we think it's important for Jaden to get as, as much experience and mu as many reps as he possibly can as being a rookie. Okay, so I want to talk about my Raptors now. Right. You had some incredible success during your time in Toronto, mm -hmm. and you were responsible you were responsible for the development of a young core and players like Mar DeRozan, Jonas Valanciunas, Pascal Siakam, and so many others. Mm -hmm. Demar established career high in points, rebounds, assists, and minutes. Mm -hmm. And of course, Kyle Lowry found his home and became a star under you. Mm -hmm. How much do you believe in those guys? to develop them into the great players they are? Well, they were a lot of fun to coach. I, I really enjoyed every minute coaching those guys. OG started for us as a as a rookie also, and he's developed his, a great career there with the Raptors. Uh, but DeMar and Kyle kind of established things. People forget Jonas as a young kid there. Uh, they wanted – everybody wanted him to shoot threes. He finally ventured out to shoot threes. But his defense in a pick-and-roll defense was second to none. He grew into that. Uh, but uh, Cal and DeMar deserve a lot of credit for establishing the culture there, the program, uh, the, our, the offensive and defensive identity of that team. They really made it happen. So there's so many good players that played there and developed there. Pascal started until we got uh, Serge Ibaka there as a, you know, it, it, Pascal as a rookie. Uh, Jakob Pertl came in. Now he's starting for San Antonio. So Masai and his group did a great job of bringing players in, still doing it, uh, as far as fitting the identity of the team and how we wanted to play, out, how they wanted to play offensively and defensively. And we kind of simulating that model here in Detroit, trying to get those type of players that fit uh, today's NBA, shooting the three, using the shot spectrum, uh, getting to the rim or shooting the three, uh, as most teams in this league are trying to do. Okay, so speaking of Siakam, Mm -hmm. He is just, just wow. I'm sure you saw the work he put in the offseason. Mm -hmm. And he said he wants to be a top five player in the league. You think that's realistic, Coach? He's getting there, Jake. He's getting there. He's uh, One thing about Pascal, you never sell him short because of a lot of players I've coached over the years, whether it's Kevin Garnett, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, all those guys were hard workers, as is Pascal. He puts the work in. He puts the time in. Uh, and you will not be a, a great player unless you are willing to to do the extra. And Pascal does that. He's done that since day one, and is paying great dividends for him now. Okay, so Coach, be honest. Mm -hmm. How good does it feel to beat the Raptors now? Because you have our number. It's like every time I see you on the on the on the calendar, I'm like, shoot, another loss. Well, Jake, it's you know, it just I know it, it it's a good story. It seems to be a good story. But we try to approach every game, being a young team the way we are, uh, to try to approach each and every game the right way. And, you know, a lot of the players there that, you know, I coached, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, uh, you know, it, a lot of it is just the way we play, the way they play is are similar. And uh, it happens we got lucky and and, and got, got some wins. So we want to keep it going. But our, my, my main thing with this team is for us to continue to grow whether it's the Raptors, whether it's uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, whether it's Chicago, no matter who we play, we want to go out and uh, create winning habits. And if it happens to be Toronto, if it happens to be Chicago, if it happens to be Milwaukee, we're trying to establish that and we're going to get there. We're, you know, we're a couple of years away from talking about a championship, but uh, we have a lot of cap space next year. We have some uh, great draft picks coming in. So, we're we're positioned positioned really well to continue our build here, and for these guys to get an opportunity to grow right in front of our eyes. And so each and every night we're trying to go out there and play the same way to to establish our identity. Okay, so last question, Coach. Okay. What are your thoughts on Scotty Barnes? You've proven you can develop mm -hmm. young players so well to mm -hmm. stars. What are your impressions on Scotty so far? Well, he's a great player. Leonard Hamilton recruited me and coached me at the University of Kentucky, his college coach. So I've known about Scotty from day one. Coach Hamilton was really talking. But I love our rookie, uh, Cade Cunningham. We drafted number one for a reason. Uh, Scotty's another great player. That class was so loaded, Jake. You could, you could put a lot of those players in a bag and toss them up. 
uh, because there's so much talent. Scotty's going to be a great player in this league for a long time, as is Cade. So, uh, you know, I just think he his the world is going to be, you know, the league is going to be good to he and Cade both. And that whole group, Evan Mobley is a great player. You can just go right down the list of that that class. Uh, you know, nobody could have gone wrong with any of those players. We love Cade. That's why we took him number one. But uh, I'm a Scotty Barnes fan. I do still think Cade, if he hadn't gotten off to a slow start his rookie year, he would have been uh, a candidate for the rookie of the year. But he got off to a slow start because of an injury. And then Scotty's team went on to make the playoffs that year. So that put him in the right position and deservingly won the rookie of the year. So I'm happy for him. I pull for him every time he's not playing against the the Pistons. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's going to be – he's he's a, a – a big time talent for for Toronto. Coach, it's been such an honor having you on my show to talk some hoops with you. Thank Do you have fun you. with me today? I had a great time. I love your energy. I love your insight, your knowledge of the game, and your future is going to be bright too. I, I'm going to be sitting in my rocking chair somewhere someday. Say, hey, I met that kid right there, and I was on his show. Thank you. <laughs>